Well, hello, YouTube, and welcome back. Today, we've got a review that I've been really excited about doing because it's of a product that I've been really excited about finding after having been looking for it for a very long time here. That's the Slingbox Pro HD. And I'm not going to go too in-depth on this because what follows is going to be a fairly long and in-depth review. But the long and short of it is that the Slingbox Pro HD is an integrated solution for streaming what's on your cable or satellite set-top box to your computer or mobile device anywhere on your network or across the internet. We'll begin with an unboxing overview of the packaging and a hardware tour of the product itself. And then we will conclude with a look at the software solutions for various operating systems before I deliver my closing thoughts and final verdict on the product. So with that out of the way, let's get started. The packaging of the Pro HD is excellent. It really represents a callback to a time when manufacturers actually cared and put some effort into the boxes that their products came from. I mean, it's beautiful, it's elegant, it tells what the product does, and it tells what's in the box. It does everything that the packaging ought to do and more perfectly. Once you open it up, you get this cool three drawer compartmentalized design. In drawer number one, you have the unit and the instructions manual. In drawer number two, you get a full set of component cables, composite cables, an S-video cable, and even a coaxial cable. And in drawer number three, you get a power adapter, a matching black Ethernet cable, and a whole set of infrared blasters. The unit itself has a very classy and modern design and color scheme to it. On the back, it has a whole host of connectivity. You get component, composite, S-video, and coaxial input, as well as pass-through, so you can leave your stuff connected to your television. It also has, of course, an Ethernet jack and the infrared emitter connector, as well as a power jack. On the front, the unit is accented by an orange power and Ethernet status lights, and when it is streaming, the letter N pulses. Very creative and unique design without being too loud. The unit itself is powered by a Texas Instruments DaVinci ASIC processor, which accepts standard definition resolution at 60 frames per second, 1280 by 720p at 30 frames per second, and 1080i full HD resolution at 30 frames per second. However, when you feed it 1080i full HD, it is downscaled to 540p because the unit isn't quite powerful enough to encode at the full HD resolution. However, it is stretched back out to the proper aspect ratio by the software. So you, you never really see any negative consequences for the most part of this limitation. Because of the flexibility of the purpose-driven DaVinci platform, the Slingbox Pro HD is great at scaling. So if you are, for example, not on a very high bandwidth connection or on a mobile device with a very low resolution screen, the Slingbox will have no trouble reducing the resolution or scaling back the bitrate to accommodate. Now that we've taken a look at the hardware, let's take a look at the software side of things. On Windows, you have a number of different choices for actually watching television remotely using the Slingbox. The first option, and the thing that's actually required to set it up, is the web plugin. The web plugin works in Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, or Firefox. It only works with the current versions of those browsers supported on Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 8.1, and Windows 10, or so they say anyway. The setup process is, once you get that plugin installed, is pretty easy, it's pretty smooth. It's very automated, it basically does it all for you. All you have to do is type in the model of cable box that you have. In this case, we'll be setting it up with the Pace DC550DR, which incidentally isn't in their database, but the Comcast version of that box, the RNG110 is, so I just put it in as the RNG110 and everything works okay there. After you set it up, it gives you a little virtual remote control. You put in your zip code, it'll look up the channel guide. The program guide for the Slingbox, unlike on the TiVo, is free, so that's a plus. Anyway, once you've gone through all that, you're all set and ready to begin enjoying television on the Slingbox. Now you can view it using the web plugin, but I don't recommend it, and here's why. The web plugin, it sucks. It's basically a repackaged version of the standard Windows client, which isn't that good to begin with. 
Plus, it has a whole other host of annoying quirks, and they aren't good ones. Mainly, the issues start to come out when you try to use the full screen mode. Sometimes you can't get the remote out of the way, and sometimes the video gets stuck at the bottom and or the top of the screen. It's messy, and it doesn't work that well. And that discussion inevitably leads us into one of the dedicated Windows client, specifically version 5. Now, if you're on Windows, honestly, even though the version 5 client sucks, it doesn't suck quite as bad. It does work, but you can tell that it was very lazily and poorly coded. For example, when you maximize the window, instead of everything being cut off properly at the screen edge, you can see, especially if you have multiple monitors, that the invisible edges of the window sag off of the display and if you have a version of Windows with transparency on the taskbar, you can see a bit of it seeps below there as well. And there's a number of other things. None of them are deal breakers, but they're all kind of minorly annoying in their own right. One of the other common criticisms of the version 5 client is that there is two banner ads and a pre-real YouTube video ad that plays before you can even watch television on it. Now, if you use a slightly older version of the version 5 Windows client, you won't get the pre-real ad, but you'll still get the banner ads. Now there's a way to get rid of those, and I'll go over those in a separate video talking all about ad blocking when it comes to Slingbox. But for the sake of this discussion and the official software clients, for as far as version 5 is concerned, there is advertising in those banner ads at least, and for the latest version, there's also the pre-real YouTube ad that I mentioned earlier. The only real redeeming quality of the version 5 Windows client is the mini guide. Your other main option for consuming Slingbox on Windows is with the version 2 client. Now, I don't know what happened to versions 3 and 4. I'm pretty sure they never existed and they just put the 5 on there to make it seem that much better. But the ironic thing is that in a lot of ways, version 2 of the client is better than version 5. Now, one of the only ways that it isn't is that it lacks the mini guide. However, what it lacks in the mini guide it makes up for in not having banner ads, not having pre-real YouTube ads, and having what seems like a, a much more coherent and much more carefully engineered software experience in general. While some of the controls are kind of kept out of the way almost to a fault in the name of keeping the interface minimalistic, it is a pretty good client, and it has the advantage of working on Windows XP and Windows Vista, in addition to Windows 7 and Windows 8. The issue with the version 2 client is that when you start getting into Windows 8.1 and Windows 10, people have reported potential issues with it, so I can't guarantee how well it would work on those platforms. But if you don't care about the mini guide, and you do care about not having advertising, version 2 may be the version of the Windows client for you. Now with that in mind, nothing changes the fact that you still need a computer powerful enough to stream in HD if you want to watch your Slingbox in high def. Now for most newer computers made within the last 10 years or so, this won't be an issue. This will really only apply to older machines, older Pentium 4s and stuff, like what might actually be running XP at this point. I know ours, even with a video card that was upgraded that was a little bit better than the one it came with, it's still not quite enough to handle 720p video smoothly, and we do have to take it down to 640x480 for the sling box. So the system requirements on the box aren't that far off. If you are on a Pentium 4, you probably need at least a 3 gigahertz Pentium 4 or a better video card, one or the other. Otherwise, you'd probably be best off with at least a Pentium D or a Core 2 Duo. I know this tablet computer, the ThinkPad X200 tablet that I use, works pretty well with it if it is plugged in because when it's unplugged I have it set to throttle the processor down 50%. And when it's plugged in, it pretty much takes every ounce of power that that 1.86 GHz Core 2 Duo has. So if you have Intel graphics, the 1.86 GHz Core 2 Duo is probably your minimum requirement for watching video in high def. Otherwise, you can watch it in standard def with almost anything that's capable of playing video at all. I believe it encodes in H.264, which is, if I'm not mistaken, what YouTube either uses or used to use. 
So if you can play YouTube videos at the resolution that you want to watch your sling box at, you're good. Now, if you're running Windows 8, Windows 8.1, Windows 10, or Windows RT, there's another version of the Sling Player client that is available to you, and that's the Metro Sling Player. Now, I tried this on Windows 10, and it loaded up okay, but when I tried to sign in, it just gave a generic error right away. It didn't even try. It crashed and burned. It fell flat on its face. And I was going to complain about it, but when I went to leave feedback, it gave me the same error. And so I went and looked at the reviews of it on the Windows App Store, and most of the people there who had got it to work didn't have good things to say about it. So I'm not really going to put forth any more effort into trying to get it to work. All you really need to know is that the general consensus is that it sucks. And my consensus is that it doesn't work at all. But you're welcome to give it a try. If you don't want to install anything, there is a fifth option that you have that Slingbox doesn't actually advertise as being an option. And as I'll demonstrate here in a minute, there's a reason why. And that option is the Flash version of Sling Player. And I was kind of surprised when I heard about this because, like I said, I hadn't seen it mentioned on their website anywhere. So I signed in, and sure enough, it works. It's pretty primitive. There's no program guide of any kind. So if you want to view the guide, then you have to pull up the virtual remote control and click the guide button and view the program guide through the cable box, which is kind of an annoying and delayed experience, but it does work. My only real issue with it is that the performance isn't that great. Even on a modestly powerful computer, the Flash version of the Sling Player tends to drop frames, especially when you're streaming in high def. So I would only use this in cases where quality isn't a concern or when you can't install the web plugin or the Windows client, but do have access to a computer with Flash Player. And we're not even done yet. It's actually a little known fact that XBMC has a Slingbox client built into it. It's not a very good one, and it only works with older versions of the Slingbox. And unfortunately, that means that the Pro HD doesn't work. It actually recognizes it, it connects to it, and it even lets you try to start the stream, but there's no video and there's no audio. It's just a blank screen when you try to use it. So if you have a very old Slingbox, that may even be something to try. However, I'm not sure how well the remote interface would work, and there's certainly no program guide or mini guide of any kind to be had in there. Finally, there's Slingfront. Slingfront is an unofficial third-party version of the Sling Player designed for Windows and specifically designed to be used in a media center computer environment. For example, if you have your computer hooked up to your television. It's a very simple client with large buttons that's meant to be easy to use with a remote control and is rumored to be fairly effective for that, although I haven't actually got a chance to try this myself. So if you're planning on using it with a media center computer, that would definitely be something to try out. Otherwise, there are very few options for actually viewing your sling box on another television. There used to be, for a very limited time, a product actually made by Sling Media called the Sling Catcher, and it was basically just a dedicated box that plugged into your network and connected to the Sling Box, had a remote control, and let you play and control the stream from your Sling Box on another television. And because they were produced in such a short run, they are very rare and consequently very expensive. As far as I know, there is no way to play your Slingbox on an Xbox 360 or any other game console that doesn't have Flash Player. And even then, as I mentioned earlier, the Flash client isn't that great, and the web versions all require a Windows or OS X plugin. So you're really more or less stuck using it on a computer or a mobile phone, which is kind of a shame. There's a few limited exceptions to this. Newer versions of the Slingbox support the Chromecast, but that requires an Android device to, to cast from, which is kind of annoying. I think it might work with one of the with some of the Amazon or Roku, Western Digital, Live TV, or Netgear Neo TV boxes, but I haven't tried those. I don't know how well they work, and if they do work, I don't know if they support high-definition video streaming. So that was one of the unfortunate realities of the Slingbox that I was a little bit disappointed by. 
It really only works well with computers and mobile devices. So that's pretty much all your options on Windows. Now let's take a look at what you have available to you if you are running OS X. OS X is largely the same story. There's a web client. I don't have any computers running OS X at the moment, so I don't know how well the web client works or doesn't work. There is a version 5 of the client application of the Sling Player for OS X. It's very strict in that it only supports OS X Yosemite and newer. So if you have a computer running anything older than OS X Yosemite, you're kind of out of luck. The web client might support older versions, but I don't know for sure. As far as the quality of the application, I would imagine that it's probably a direct port of the Windows one, so there's probably a lot of the same shoddy programming and advertisements and other annoyances. Now the OS X version really hamstrings you. I mean the Windows version did, but the OS X version does it really bad because if you don't want to use the version 5 client, your only other option beside the web plugin and the Flash player, which isn't all that good, is the version 1 client. Now the version 1 client is good in some ways and lacking in other ways. It is good in that it has excellent operating system compatibility. Unlike the version 5 client, it is compatible with OS X, Panther, and newer. So you have a lot of choices there. It works with both the x86 and PowerPC OS X computers, and it also doesn't have any advertising in it. However, it is severely limited in that it doesn't support high-definition video and high-definition streaming. So if you want to watch HDTV on your OS X computer that's running an operating system version older than Yosemite, you're totally screwed. So to recap, you have plenty of choices on Windows, none of which are particularly great. You have fewer choices on OS X, which are also not particularly great. Unfortunately, if you are running Linux, you are pretty much completely out of luck when it comes to Slingbox. Your only real option, again, is the Flash-based player, which I guess would work, but word on the street is that hardware acceleration on Flash player for Linux is lacking, to say the least, so the experience, even at standard definition, probably wouldn't be that great. And that still doesn't offer you any solution for actually setting the thing up, which requires that web client on a very recent version of Windows or OS X. On the mobile side of things, you have even fewer options. For Android and iOS, once again, you have to have a very current version of the operating system. Although the nice thing about Android is that the ever-annoying Android marketplace will only ever feed you the newest supported version for your device's operating system. I believe the iOS store does this to some degree, but it isn't as thorough with it. So with that, you really need a current device probably it's going to require at least iOS 7 or newer. So if you have anything older than an iPhone 4 era device, my guess is that you might be out of luck. Don't quote me on that because I haven't actually tried it, but that would be my guess based on their stingy nature of support for all their other current products, at least as far as the software goes. As far as the performance of the application itself, it's pretty disappointing, at least on the Android side. There is a free ad-supported version and a very expensive paid ad-free version. I have not tried the paid version. I just have the free ad-supported version and ads are blocked on my device universally. I don't know if there's a difference other than the advertising between those two versions because I haven't actually tried them, but I don't feel like giving them my money because of how poorly the free version actually works. It does work and you can control your cable box and actually view the stream, but it is in standard definition only. As far as I can tell, there's no way to get a high definition stream and the application was clearly programmed by the same group of knuckleheads who set up the Windows client because there's just all sorts of issues with it left and right. First off, if you press the back button on the main menu, the program totally locks up for five seconds and then it force closes. Once you get back into it, when you try watching video, if you turn the device into landscape mode to put the video full screen, the little header never gets out of the way. It goes halfway up, so it's halfway off the screen and it's halfway on the screen and it just looks awful. It's like nobody even bothered to test it. 
clearly the Android version was an afterthought, at least the current version of it. I don't know what the past versions of it looked like since I only got into the Slingbox here as of recently. Now the nice thing about Slingbox actually being that it has been around for a while is that they have actually a pretty diverse offering of mobile software solutions for legacy devices. So if you have a mobile phone, PDA, tablet, or what have you running Windows Mobile 2003, Windows Mobile 5, 6, 6.1, Symbian, Palm OS 5, or Palm OS 6, you're good to go. They actually have, and they hide this really well. I don't know why. They have This is almost impossible to find on their website. They have a little download portal for legacy versions of their mobile applications. So if you have an older device, you're actually covered by Slingbox. All that to say, Slingbox is an excellent piece of hardware, hampered by poor software that is very annoying, but works just well enough to be usable. And if you don't like any of them, too bad, because Slingbox is pretty much the only product in its class. It's really the only option for watching television remotely. There's no DIY way to do it, and there's really no products from other vendors that can do anything quite like it can, especially not at that price point. While we're on the topic of price, this thing is astronomically expensive brand new, so I cannot recommend brand new sling boxes, but if you can find used ones in the neighborhood of $20 like I did, it's an excellent buy. And with that, I thank you for sticking around for the whole review here on the all-new Channel 2012. And I'll see you all in the next one.